Okay. Um, which of the following complications is this patient at an increased risk for due to her condition? Um, thrombotic events, severe infections, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, amyloidosis, or tumor lysis syndrome. Seven-year-old woman presents to her primary care physician with a three-month history of fatigue, blurred vision, and recurrent epistaxis. On a physical exam, she's got generalized lymphadenopathy and pallor. Um, laboratory tests reveal anemia. Roll, I cannot pronounce that, but it's where the red blood cells stack up. Yeah, and real low. <laughs> An increased serum viscosity. Serum protein electrophoresis shows a monoclonal spike in the gamma region, which on further workup confirms the presence of IgM monoclonal, monoclonal protein. Okay. Do, 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 do. So I'm trying to remember all the causes of the spikes because you've got like the M gus of un. We don't know the significance. Then there's one I'm trying to remember what you've got multiple myeloma that can cause a spike, but this really doesn't fit with the multiple myeloma. So there's another one and I can't remember the name of it, but it's specifically with IgM. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, without the name of the diagnosis, I'm really kind of throwing myself in for a loop. But I'm going to, I guess, use the symptom. She's got, like, anemia. What else can be a result of the anemia? She's got a loss of platelets because she's got the recurrent epistaxis. Um, I mean, honestly, with any... I'm going to go with tumor lysis syndrome just because with any sort of, like, leukemia or lymphoma, you do have, like, the high the high um cell turnover rate which can lead to tumor lysis syndrome okay so let's let's talk about this here i'm gonna i'm gonna see what i can i can get you to look at it a certain way okay so you have an older woman here okay yes. symptoms chronic symptoms of fatigue blurry vision and recurrent epistaxis okay so that's your chief complaint physical exam she has lymphadenopathy all over and she has pallor right so um, and then you get to your uh, your lab work. You have some anemia, you have some rouleau formations, and then also increased serum viscosity, okay? Why is increased serum viscosity important? It means she has too much of either like red blood cells or platelets or something like that. Yeah, so something, right? You're like, oh, she has thick blood, right? And then yeah. you get this electrophoresis showing all these IgM monoclonal proteins, right? Can that cause you increased viscosity if you have a bunch of protein in your blood? Probably. <laughs> Probably, right? Okay, so good. So now that you have that, so now you have to kind of relate to yourself. Okay, so if you have all this protein and if your, your blood is thick, can that cause you to have, you know, blurry vision? Can that cause you to be tired? Can that cause you, you know, these things, right? Um, so how can it cause you to have blurry vision, you think? I mean, aren't you like slowing down the blood flow to the eyes? Okay, good, good. So you're having kind of issues with blood supply, right? So if you have thick blood, now going back, what, what do you think, you know, if you have thick viscous blood, all this protein, what will that increase the risk for? right some some sort of claw or thrombus forming yeah yeah that makes sense that makes sense right you're 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 this is kind of wallstrom's macroglobin that's what it's called yeah. okay <laughs> um and so you can you can have this with you know perineal plastics and things like that but the key thing you got to really think about is if you, if you have thick blood you're going to increase your risk for clots right but yeah. remember phrasing the question is super important here too because it says which of the following is a complication right? From increased risk due to her, uh, you know, condition, right? So you have to think to yourself, right? Is she at increased risk for severe infections? Maybe, right? Um, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, not really, right? Amyloidosis, not really, right? Tumor lysis syndrome, not really, right? Unless you give them chemo or something like that, right? So better answer that's most direct, right? Because severe infections can be down the line, but most um, kind of the most common or highest likelihood is if you have thick blood, then you're going to have a lot of clots, that makes sense.